Hello everyone, this is Sir D, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the next topic in exploratory cookery, which is maintenance of appropriate kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Are you ready to learn? I hope that you are, because this is an interesting topic that you can use in your future. So, let's get started! Our objectives for today's lesson are the following. First, select various types of chemicals for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Second, use cleaning tools, equipment, and paraphernalia in accordance to standard operating procedure. And third, familiarize oneself on the correct way of handling and storing the chemicals used for cleaning the kitchen tools and equipment. Some gets food poisoning from food or utensils, which get contaminated with parasites, bacteria, and other viruses. Clean and safe kitchen lowers food risk and accidents. That is why it is essential for a home cook to practice. That is why it is essential for a home cook practice proper maintaining and handling of kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Let us now discover how cleaning and sanitizing is done in the kitchen. Cleaning is defined as the process of removing dirt from a surface such as a dish, glass, and cutting board. It is done by using a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, and other substances. We must keep in mind to choose the right cleaning agent, considering that not all agents can be used on food contact surfaces. It is also important in order to make cleaning easy. Now, we have here the different cleaning agents. First is the detergent. This can penetrate soil quickly and soften it. It is the reason detergents are commonly used to routinely wash tableware, surfaces, and equipment. Solvent cleaners. These are periodically on surfaces to remove burnt grease. Solvent cleaners are also referred to as degreases. Next follows the acid cleaners. These are used on mineral deposits. Acid cleaners are often used in removing scales in wear washing machines and steam tables. And finally, we have the abrasive cleaners. These are used to remove heavy accumulations of soil that are difficult for detergents to deal with. Some abrasives are also capable of disinfection. Sanitizing is the process done through heating, radiation, and chemicals. Restaurants commonly use the method of heating and chemicals in sanitizing, while radiation is rarely used. Let's now talk about the first method of sanitizing, which is heat. 
There are three methods of application of heat with regard to sanitizing the kitchen area and tools. First is through hot water, wherein it is commonly used by restaurants and even at homes. Second is steam. And the last one, a third, is hot air. Clean or washed items are exposed on certain temperatures, typically around 165 degrees Fahrenheit to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Second sanitizing method is through chemicals, and there are three known chemicals to be used. Chlorine, iodine, and quaternary ammonium. These chemicals must be given consideration when used in order for it to be effective. Concentration pertains to the proper ratio of the chemical with the water on how it is diluted so that it will be effective. It is mentioned that too little amount of sanitizer may result in an adequate reduction of harmful microorganisms. While we must be careful because too much concentration can be toxic. Temperature is the second consideration. Chemical sanitizers generally work best in water between 55 degrees Fahrenheit and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And a third, the last consideration would be contact time. There is a recommended amount of time for a sanitizer to effectively kill harmful microorganisms. Now, in order for us to get the desired sanitizer, it should be tested. However, accurate tests of the strength of sanitizing solution, we must be aware of what type of chemical is being used and what it is for. Having learned cleaning and sanitizing, do you practice those in your home? It is interesting to differentiate those two and be able to apply it at our homes. Now, let us move forward to the advantages and disadvantages of different chemical sanitizers. Let's get to know first, the chlorine. It has its advantages and disadvantages. Its advantage is effective on wide variety of bacteria. It is highly effective and not affected by hard water and it is generally inexpensive for its disadvantage it is corrosive irritating to the skin its effectiveness decreases with increasing ph of the solution it also deteriorates during storage and when exposed to light dissipates rapidly and loses activity in the presence of organic matter. Iodine comes next. Its advantage is it has a brown color that indicates the strength. It is not affected by hard water. It is less irritating than the chlorine. And activity is not lost rapidly in the presence of organic matter. However, it has its disadvantage. Its effectiveness decreases greatly with an increase in pH. Should not be used in water that is at 120 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. And it might discolor equipment and surfaces. And for the last, we have ammonium or the quaternary ammonium. Its advantage is it is non-toxic, it is odorless, colorless, non-corrosive, non-irritating, stable to heat, 
and relatively stable in the presence of organic matter. It is also active over a wide pH range. However, its disadvantages are slow destruction of some microorganisms, not compatible with some detergents and hard water. Cleaning and sanitizing of utensils. There are three steps needed to effective cleaning and sanitize utensils. Namely, washing, sanitizing, or drying. Utensils such as cutting boards, bowls, and knives need to be thoroughly washed in warm, soapy, running water. Effective cleaning will remove most of the dangerous bacteria present. Sanitizing, on the other hand, will then kill any that might remain. A dishwasher is very effective at sanitizing if it has a hot wash and drying cycle. If there is an unavailability of dishwasher, you will need to sanitize it in a sink using a chemical sanitizer or a very hot water. Carefully follow the instructions on the container as different sanitizers work in different ways. As earlier mentioned, it has three considerations, concentration, temperature, and contact time. All utensils must then be thoroughly dried before they are reused. Air drying is best, but towels can be used if they are clean. If you are washing up at an event being held outdoors, make sure you have access to plenty of hot water. If hot water is unavailable, disposable eating and drinking utensils should be used and enough cooking utensils provided to the last duration of the event so that washing up is not necessary. Cleaning Kitchen Premises Cleaning your kitchen regularly is important not only to keep it looking its best, but also to remove all of the germs and bacteria that accumulate regularly in the kitchen area. In cleaning kitchen premises, there are three things you will need. Broom, cleaning rags, and the bucket. The first step would be to collect the loose dust by sweeping the kitchen floor daily with a broom or static sweeper and wiping down countertops, tables, and other surfaces with a cleaning rag. To remove a sticky buildup, wipe with a damp cleaning rag and wipe a damp mop over the kitchen floor. You don't want any form of food debris or stain on your kitchen floor. To make a solution, mix one gallon of warm water in a bucket with one half cup white vinegar and one teaspoon dish soap. White vinegar is an effective natural cleaning agent and it is most applicable in any type of surface. Dip your mop into the bucket Ring the mop out and wipe across your kitchen floors. The diluted vinegar solution makes it safe for any kitchen floor surface while still strong enough to clean and disinfect. The dish soap assists in cutting through any food residue that may be on the kitchen floor. And then, let your floor air dry after cleaning. Make an all-purpose cleaner in a spray bottle comes at the number 3 step. Combine 3 cups of warm water with 1 half cup of white vinegar and a teaspoon of dish soap. 
And then at number four, is spray the solution onto the kitchen surface and wipe off with a damp cleaning rag. This works well on any type of kitchen surface including cabinetry, sinks, tables, counters, and any other area that requires cleaning. And at number five, you don't want any odor around your kitchen. So, fill a few bowls with about one half cup of baking soda. Place this around your kitchen to absorb the odor and keep the kitchen smelling fresh. Also, open windows to let fresh air circulate which is especially used when cooking strong smelling foods. Proper storage of cleaning equipment. First, they should be stored in a clean, dry place adequately protected against vermin and other sources of contamination. Second, cups, bowls, and glasses shall be inverted for storage. Third, when not stored in closed cupboards or lockers, utensils and containers shall be covered or inverted whenever practicable. Utensils shall be stored on the bottom shelves for open cabinets below the working top level for easy reach. At number four, Racks, trays, and shelves shall be made of materials that are imperious, corrosive-resistant, non-toxic, smooth, durable, and resistant to chipping. And at number 5, drawers shall be made of the same material and kept clean. Full-line drawers are not acceptable, but the use of a clean and removable towels for lining drawers is acceptable. And for our last topic, we have 10 steps for organizing kitchen cabinets. When you are organizing your kitchen cabinets, pretend it has a glass door. And by doing this, you have the thinking that everyone is going to see what's inside. Second, take a look at the photos from different sources, especially in the internet. Look for inspiration so that you can easily conduct your organization of the kitchen cabinets. Remove everything and scrub the shelves with some soapy water. Of course, the cabinets must be clean first before you organize this stuff. Fourth, if you're a contact paper type of person, rip out the old and replace it with the new. Number five, take anything you don't use anymore. You don't want to have any clutter in your cabinets, especially that you're organizing it to make it more presentable. Six, think about what you reach for most often and make sure it gets a position that is easy to reach. 7. Arrange everything in a composition that makes you happy. 8. Perhaps take a cabinet full of glasses and line them up by the color. Make sure all fronts are facing out and straight. Number 9. Take a step back after one shelf is done. To check if it is properly organized. Number 10, make someone else come look at what you've done. Asking for opinion of other people can truly help in improving our own practice. I hope that through these topics, you were able to get something that you can apply in your daily life. If you have any questions regarding this topic or would like to learn more about other related topics, please comment down below. Don't forget to like and share this video to your friends and to your family so that you can share 
the learning. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sir D. Have a great day everyone and I will see you in our next video lesson.